When you ground a hot dog to an AM radio tower, it generates plasma. While the hot dog's flesh is getting vaporized, a tiny plasma arc moves the air around it back and forth. And because this tower is an AM tower, it uses amplitude modulation, where a transmitter, this huge thing, changes the amplitude of a carrier wave up and down. Just like a speaker cone moving up and down, the plasma arc from the hot dog turns that modulation into audible sound. And the hot dog gets pretty loud. I measured it, and this 7.6 kilowatt tower generates about 80 decibels of sound when grounded through a standard American Bar S hot dog measured at 10 feet away. But I was wondering, can we see the sound from the plasma without using a microphone? Put another way, can I get slow motion footage to translate the visual plasma arcing into audible sound? I think so, but I have a problem. My iPhone only gets 240 frames per second. And even for the worst quality audio, you need like eight kilohertz. That's 8,000 cycles per second. That's like 30 times more frames than I could do on my iPhone. So I need a better camera. And guess who I met at Open Source this year? Gavin from the Slow Mo Guys. Hello. I'm gonna see if I can turn a slow-mo video from his camera, a phantom that can record 1.75 million frames per second, into audible sound. And he'll have a video that goes into more depth on the plasma and the hot dog, but for this video, I'm just gonna focus on getting sound out of the slow-motion footage. Here's my hypothesis. Imagine these three sheets of paper represent three loudness values, but using luminance or brightness instead of sound pressure. This black sheet is quiet. Quiet. This lighter sheet is medium. Medium. And this white sheet is loud. Loud! So if I can turn those values into a waveform, I can make sound, right? Quiet. Medium. Loud! Medium. Quiet. Medium. Loud! Medium. Because if I open up a sound file for this recording, I can zoom way in and the audio file is just representing the loudness of my voice by a digital value from like one to a hundred. It's not exactly that simple, but I think it'll be good enough for a test run. And that's where this comes in. This little Arduino is a speaker. Well, sorta. Of. Let me show you how it works. I programmed this to blink more brightly depending on the level of sound coming out of a headphone jack. So I can play a song on my phone and it'll start blinking to the music. Can't hear that? Well, neither can I. That's because we're using our ears as microphones. But using Python and OpenCV, I can take video frames of the LED and turn it into sound. It took some practice, especially since I was stuck using my 240 frame per second iPhone, but eventually I realized if I pitch shifted the sound and slowed it way down, recorded that in high speed with a black background, processed the frames, and sped up the result, it worked. First, here's the original sound I recorded. This is a test recording for the LED brightness simulation. And then here it is slowed down like 10 times slower. And here's what it looked like after I turned off all the lights and recorded it with my iPhone's slow-mo mode. Just a lot of blinks. And I realized something at this point. Since sound is an AC waveform, it goes above and actually also below zero volts. Meaning when I used the example code from the Arduino library, it was actually clipping out half the sound waveform but maybe it's still good enough with just half the data? After a few minutes processing minutes of LED blinks, my script spat out this, which actually looks horrible. Luckily, after fixing the DC offset, which basically means put the sound waves back into a way a speaker can actually play them, and by speeding up the file by 40 times, here's the result. Here's the original for reference. This is a test recording for the LED brightness simulation. And here's the uh, one that I got off the LED. <laughs> How fun is that? Okay, so it's not like a studio quality recording, but that's audible, right? At least I know it's possible now to record sound using a camera instead of a microphone. But the big question is, what happens when it's a hot dog instead of an LED? Before we get started, don't try this at home. We did the safety calculations and we're using gear to help mitigate risks. But if you get an RF burn, like you'll see with these hot dogs, it burns you from the inside out. 
Trust me, you don't want internal burns from kilowatts of RF. But with our safety gear in place, we tested a number of hot dogs, a corn dog, and new this time, an actual corn cob. I was hoping it'd start popping corn, but apparently you have to use a different type of corn for that. We tried bratwurst again, and this time it didn't translate anything into German. It did cook that outer layer pretty nice though. I also tasted one of the hot dogs, and the cook inside was decent. My theory is the impedance of the Bar S hot dogs matched the tower better than the ballpark ones I tested last year. I also tried this ridiculously long sausage, which wound up a lot less impressive than I thought it would be. We ran a few other experiments too, but when it came time for the final test, we came back to the classic, the standard hot dog. Now, one thing I hadn't realized until this point was Gavin could only capture like two seconds at a time at 40,000 frames per second. And at that setting, it's like 100 gigabytes per second of disk space. And that translates into two hours of footage. So I realized I'm gonna have two problems I didn't even think about. First, the LED blinking test clip I did on my iPhone was five seconds long. And even with the conditions in my studio, I could only get a few intelligible words. But second, and this is what worried me the most, I noticed some of the plasma arcing was hidden by the hot dog since, you know, it's like 3D. That pulsating flesh covers up some of the light that I need to use for my signal. But we were committed at this point, so I told my dad to give it a go. Go ahead, Dad. My advice is, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I drink too much. <laughs> and I diet my dad flung the hot dog away for some critter to feast on, and after we all got home, I got to work. Or that's what I would have done if I didn't accidentally delete all the footage. So first I spent an entire day recovering the footage and writing this blog post, then I got to work. This was my first time ever working with a cine file, and I wound up watching way too much of the one hour, 48 minute file just while I was converting it in Resolve. <laughs> I mean, look at this. This is the raw footage at 30 FPS. I'm sure someone out there would love to watch this for almost two hours, and what the heck, let's just say if this video gets 10,000 likes, I'll publish the whole hour and 48 minute video over on Level 2 Jeff. But speeding it up like 3,000 times faster, here's what that footage looks like paired with the real-time video. My advice is, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I drink too much. <laughs> and I, my advice is, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I drink too much. <laughs> to run my brightness script just with the plasma, I tried keying out the rest of the frame, isolating the plasma in the middle. For my first try, I used Final Cut Pro's Magic Mask. That uses AI. But when I tried processing the two hours of footage, it just crashed. But looking at the footage, the plasma is so much brighter than everything else, so I tried an old school approach and used a luminance key. Final Cut Pro has a built-in filter that just looks at the brightness of each pixel, and if it's below a certain threshold, it blacks it out. And that worked. But watching this back, especially with the audio waveform from my recording from my own camera, I'm definitely missing a lot of information. Parts like this are from when the hot dog was covering up the arcing. But I exported the keyed out footage and ran it through my Python script, all 390,000 frames. And after normalizing the audio and speeding it back up, here's what I got. It's not that impressive, but if I play it back along with the real-time footage, it does line up with a couple of the louder parts. So the fidelity might not be there, but I don't think my hypothesis is invalid. If I could find a thinner hot dog and film it at a little better angle, I might get like a 1920s phone call level of audio quality. So can you record AM radio with a fast enough camera looking only at the plasma generated between a hot dog and the antenna? It's plausible, but it's probably cheaper to just use a microphone. And while I was working on editing this video, my dad also found this clip from the Camox AM tower site, the one that we visited two years ago. I've never seen nothing like that before. That's pretty wild. Looking at the direction that it's going, it's got to be trying to get to that rail over there, don't you think? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. I got, I got a great shot of it here. That's it? I've never seen anything like that. It's going straight for that rail, isn't it? I have never seen, unless it's not tight. Got loose when we were doing something? Maybe. The KMOX tower runs at 50 kilowatts, which is more than five times the power we are dealing with with our hot dog. That also means it's five times more dangerous, and that's just not a risk we're willing to take, at least not with a human holding the stick. 
Also while I was working on this video, the Action Lab posted a video about making fire talk. And that makes me think we might not need a whole AM radio tower to reproduce the experiment and validate it. If you want to take a crack at it, I put up all the code I used on GitHub. And if you want to see more meat get obliterated by plasma in slow motion, check out Gavin's video on the Slow Mo Guys channel.